Welcome to the public affairs program of KNAT TV, Joy in Our Town. My name is Mike Cosgrove. I have the privilege of being your host today. Joining me in the studio, I have the honor of having the mayor of Albuquerque, Richard Berry, with me. Mayor, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. Mike, it's an honor to be here. Uh, thank you for having me on. You bet. I've got. I've, I've been doing a little bit of research here. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, the Strategic Digital Alliance uh, program that you have going on. I'm very excited about this. Can you tell us what this alliance is with Microsoft? Well. You know, we have all these talented kids in our community, these students, and they, they need an opportunity. And so much of what we talk about today is in the world of digital. Um, it's in the world of digital electronics. It's in the world of coding, applications. It, something, if you're doing something today, you're probably doing it with a computer, obviously. It's been that way for 20 years. But what Microsoft has done is they've developed a program for middle school students and, and adults as well to really try to get folks up to speed and really in the groove on on the digital world. So we had a uh, this summer we had our first camp it was called Digi Girls, and we also had uh, what they used to call Digi Dudes, yeah. um, which is actually uh, the, the the young man side of it. And it's interesting because they separate the young ladies and the young men uh, into these groups because they found that the dynamic is much better when they do that. So they, they, they we had Digi Girls in the Digi Camp here, and so now it's just called Digi Camp. And the, the point of it is they get these young ladies and young men together uh, mostly middle school years mm -hmm. and they just talk about technology but they also talk about setting goals yeah. they talk about ambition they talk about what it means to them and maybe for the first time in their lives somebody has talked to them about what do you think you can be what do you think you can achieve and then they use uh, technology to help them get there but at the, at the end of the week um, they teach them how to write a little iPhone app or a little smartphone app and sure. and they just really try to take some of the mystery out of that and get them fired up about uh, about their future. You know, I just love the idea of setting goals, looking right. ahead, looking at what they can be and, and just kind of changing that focus a little bit. We all have to do that. We now, do. Even an old guy like me has to do that. You know, <laughs> yeah, every once in a while you have to, you know, you have to keep your keep your your, your core values there, but you always have to um, look forward and think, you know, what are the next five years, what are the next ten years going to be? Yeah. A, you know, God blesses you with a lot of years. You don't want to get to the end of that and, uh, and think to yourself, boy, I, I, you know, I wasted some time during the process. Great point, great point. Now, uh, what do you think that this alliance is going to do economically for the people here in Albuquerque? Well, a couple things. Um, we want people to be more economically mobile, and that means a lot of different things for a lot of different people. But for the most part, we want people to be able to, to look at their current situation and make a decision. Am I happy where I am today? And if I am, that's great. Um, we'll keep moving forward there. Uh, if I'm not happy where I am, what can I do to skill myself up so that I can be more competitive in the workplace, more attractive to an employer out there? Or maybe I want to start a business of my own and create jobs for others. We want them to, to, to have the skills to do that. So. Um, if the, the more skilled we have our workforce in the city of Albuquerque, whether you're a scientist at Sandia National Laboratories or whether you, you know, were started off like I did as a house painter, um, you, you really, um, you know, you can really be more economically mobile in one way or the other. And, and the more skills we can get in place to do that, then the better our local economy is going to be. But uh, as much as I think about the local economy, I really think about the family economy. Yeah. And what's the economy like at your kitchen table? And if it's not where you want it to be for you, we want to be here to help you make that better. And you know, something I've really enjoyed about your administration over the years is the focus on helping the community and thinking about that family first. Well, sometimes it's with someone who's homeless. Sometimes it's, it's someone who's really having a difficult time struggling on yeah. the streets. And sometimes it's just helping somebody that, by all accounts, people would look at it and say, gosh, that person's doing pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. but if that person wants to do better make it happen. help them out you betcha yeah. uh, you know we talked about what it's going to impact us as far as the local economy but will this have an impact on the national economy as well digital lines I think so I think so I think, I, th I think it's just a matter of, of, of every mayor that I talk to and I'm in the US Conference of Mayors and I'm the uh, current chairman of Metro Economies which is one of the committees in the US Conference of Mayors so I talked to a lot of mayors uh, and everybody wants to see their city prosper. Yeah. Everybody wants to see things better. Uh, it's been a tough recovery from this recession. Yes, it has. And it's been particularly difficult uh, for folks who don't have the skill sets to keep up with the, uh, the 21st century economy. So we want to just make sure as mayors here in Albuquerque and around the country that, uh, that we raise, that raise the tide. Rise, you know, a rising tide floats all boats. And we want to see that throughout the country. We think it can make a difference. And we think there's a special place for mayors in that equation. 
Absolutely, I would agree with that. As part of the Digital Alliance, Albuquerque is going to work with Microsoft to implement a train-the-trainer mm -hmm. model. Can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about that? Well, it, you know, you and I could go out, Mike, and, and I could probably, you know, I could probably get out there and reach 50 to 100 people today if I, if I had an opportunity to. I'll probably do that today as a mayor. Sure. I'll probably see somewhere between, maybe, maybe as a mayor I'll see 200 people today. Wow. But for the most part, uh, we, we, you know, one person can only reach so far. So what we're trying to do is bring Microsoft in and have them train those of us in the community that would like to carry this forward. And if they can come in with one person and train 10, and those 10 can train 100, and those 100 can train 1,000, wow. then all of a sudden we can get this grassroots movement um, going so that, that anybody, any middle schooler in our city that wants to learn some of these skills has an opportunity to do that, and they don't have to wait in line two or three years to get into the, uh, the DigiCamp. The multiplication factor. Absolutely. Touch as many people as Absolutely. we can. Uh, now, this model, having to train the trainer, there's a lot of people out there that are entry level, just getting started on yeah. that. And so how's that going to impact them? Well, we have something for everybody. Mm. As I said, it was interesting, uh, the first DigiCamp we had for the girls, I came in the, the day after they were, they were just kind of wrapping up, I guess. Yeah. And I asked them, I said, who's been having fun? How you doing? And the girls were so energized. In fact, the, the folks from Microsoft said, this is one of the best groups oh, of great. young ladies that we've seen anywhere in the country. So we should be proud of that in Albuquerque. Yeah. Um, and I said, what was the most fun thing you did? And one girl held up her smartphone. She said, mom and I, I went home last night. My mom and I built an app. Oh, okay. And I said, what did the app, what, what the app do? And she said, well, it has a little bubble that comes across the screen and you touch it and it pops. <laughs> All right, that's, that's probably not the most advanced app <laughs> probably that you have on your phone, you but that's, what, that's where we have to start. You bet. You have to take one step. That's, you know, that's take one Take one step. So if people are, are looking um, to, to, to just, you know, whether it's learning how to use an Excel spreadsheet, there's, there's great resources in Albuquerque, and it's not, just, uh, it's not just Microsoft. They're doing great work, but it's, you know, CNM has wonderful classes on, yes. on how to use software programs, how to do Excel spreadsheets, how to, you know, go into the, the, the basics, but then all the way through. So, so we want to make sure that there's a broad range uh, so, that, that, so that we can, like I said earlier, take that mystery out of it. And if you want to yep. take that first step towards being more technologically advanced, um, you know, we, we have something for you. And then, of course, our, our talent, we didn't really have it on the schedule to talk about, but talent Albuquerque, talent ABQ. Yeah. We have 35 skill-up centers now in the city of Albuquerque, and anybody can call 311, and they can find out where these are. Many of them are libraries and community centers. Right. People can walk in and skill, you know, test themselves and see where they are in these five basic skills that everybody needs to be employable. And if they have a weakness in one area, we have free curriculum online that they can take to help skill up as well. Wow. So part of it is assessing yourself on the front end, and then the second part is skilling up. Following through. Absolutely. Outstanding. <clears throat> um, the city is identifying candidate groups that have gaps in the digital uh, skills, digital alliance. Uh, how are we doing on that? We're having a discussion in our community about prosperity right now, and it's interesting because People say, well, why are you talking about prosperity? That's an interesting, yeah. broad topic that means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And that's exactly the point. Right. We, we, you know, what prosperity looks like for you and I may be completely different than, than someone who lives in a different part of the city or sure. who has a different educational background or comes from a different family background. Right. And, and so what we're doing is we're trying to identify these areas where there's gaps. And we're finding some interesting ones. We're finding that that in some of our Title I schools, and for, for those listeners and watchers, viewers, Title I school is a school where a predominant number of the students there are, are on a, what they call free and reduced lunch program, which means they're living in poverty. Right. And we have 100, and I'm going to get the number wrong, but we have about 140 to 143 schools in Albuquerque. Wow. Out of those, my understanding is about 101 of those are, are some form or fashion free and reduced lunch. So there's a lot of poverty in New Mexico. We know that our children, from some reports, are, um, are actually at the bottom of some of the wrong lists as far as, as well-being. Sure. So we thought when we went out we would find a lot of groups you know, that, that, that live in poverty that, that have this gap. Mm -hmm. And we did, we did find that. But we also found that we're finding some gaps where people that maybe live in more affluent areas of the city or go to schools where you wouldn't really think of them as Title I schools also have some gaps because even though they don't, you know, they're not be able to participate in, in certain specialty, specialized programs, maybe they don't have all the curriculum that they need in their day-to-day -day lives. Uh -huh. So there's a lot of great resources out there like Khan Academy for helping, yeah. helping kids with their homework and, and, and these are free on the internet, but we want to just make sure we get people connected.
so that we can get people you know closer to Central Avenue whether their businesses or neighborhoods close by connected so if you're not connected to the internet if you don't have the ability to afford that as a family uh, you can go to one of our libraries and get connected or we'd like you to be able to you know in an affordable way to get connected in your community you know, there's a lot of stuff that we do here in Albuquerque that people don't know about. That's excellent. We're actually a national us. leader. We're actually a national leader in a lot of these programs. Mm -hmm. And it, it's kind of fun for me to travel around the country I'll bet. and talk to people about the, the, the great work that's being done here because it's a direct reflection on the quality of people we have here. This is a great town. It is. It's, it's a, full it's of great folks absolutely. and caring folks. And the faith community here does a wonderful job. I'm yeah. um, just really reaching out and helping people. So it, it's just, it's a, I'm lucky to be the mayor yeah. of this town. And we're lucky to have it. You do a great job for us. Uh, the uh, Digital Alliance is going to focus on development and capacity building for city startups, like small businesses and things like that. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, we're really, uh, to, uh, this, week, this week, as we're filming this, we're in Global Entrepreneurship Week. And what that means is there's, a, there's like 25 million people around the world this week celebrating entrepreneurship. Oh. Albuquerque is one of six cities in the country that were chosen, and we're just hitting it over the fence. Uh, we have more programs than, than any other city in the country to talk about entrepreneurship. And this is a key component uh, that we're working on with some of our partners. I just personally believe that you know, we're blessed to have the, 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 the government sector here. We're blessed to have Sandia National Laboratories, sure. Kirtland Air Force Base, AFRL, which is Air Force Research Laboratories, right. um, and, all, and all the great base of support we have. Uh, from government jobs in the public sector. But what we also know is that, that those revenues aren't growing like they used to with some of the maybe dysfunction that's happening in Washington mm -hmm. and some of the, you right. know, everything's on a continuing resolution now and then there's a lot of uncertainty with, with budgeting and, and, and just lots and lots of different things. So we're telling folks if we just continue to rely on that and we, and we don't maybe pivot a little bit and work on more private sector development through entrepreneurship, 20 years down the road, we may be in a little bit of a pickle. And we're learning a little bit of a pickle today because of the shrinking revenues and some of the, some of the bases. Right. All of this leads to this idea that if you're a baker and you want to you have a bakery, let us help you do that. If you're a mechanic mm -hmm. and you want to have a mechanic shop, let us help you do that. If you are, are someone who's cleaning uh, hotel rooms and you want to you start a small restaurant, uh, let us help you do that. And if you're a scientist that works at Sandia Labs and you want to take some of that technology or, and, and put it into the marketplace and try to commercialize that so that we can all buy it off the shelf, uh, at, or if you're at the university, whatever it happens to be, we want to be here to help you do that. And for folks that haven't ever been in the world of small business, and this is where I came from, yeah. um, it's a, you know, we don't want that to be a mystery either. I mean, Maria and I, we borrowed a couple thousand dollars from our parents and after college, and we started you know, working on businesses, and we ended up in about a five-state region doing, doing work. Wow. Um, so if I can do it, for, you know, for goodness sake, so anybody can do it. <laughs> so we just want to show people uh, to do that. And the Digital Alliance is going to help us with that, because so much of what we do in business has to do with technology, whether it's your website yeah. design, whether it's marketing campaigns, whether it's accounting, payroll, insurance, the corporate side, whatever you're doing, uh, we used it in, in construction for estimating uh, and for, for putting proposals together for sure. clients. So you just, you know, this day and age, you know, I, some days I, I threaten to put my cell phone away and, uh, and go back to a number two uh, pencil with a yep, yellow sheet of paper. Yep. <laughs> but I don't think we can really survive like that. Things anymore. have changed. In the world of business, yeah. Yeah. Well, Mayor Barry, thank you so much for being here with us today. This is such an important part of your continued work to help our economy out here and to help the people. And we just appreciate it so much and all the work that you and your team are doing. I appreciate the opportunity. You bet. For those of you watching us today, get involved. Uh, look at this digital alliance. See how it can benefit you and your family and your friends. We appreciate you joining us today and joining our town. My name is Mike Cosgrove. Have a blessed day. Ah, the comforts of home. Of gathering around a meal. Spending time with loved ones. In a safe, warm place. Millions would love to live in a house just like yours. Maybe they already do. Learn how to protect your family at pestworld.org. Welcome to the public affairs program of KNAT-TV, Joy in Our Town. My name is Mike Cosgrove. Thank you for joining us today. 
I have the privilege of uh, having Mayor Barry from Albuquerque here in my office today. It's a pleasure to have you here, sir. Thanks for coming. Mike, always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. You bet. I, I'm very excited about this segment that we're going to shoot today. You've taken a rather unusual step in looking forward to growing the economy of what we have here in Albuquerque and in New Mexico. And I, today we're going to talk about that. It's a plan for prosperity. Tell us a little bit about what that plan's about. Well, it, it's really an effort to have a first of its kind dialogue to individually speak to people about what they think prosperity looks like. And I'll tell you why, why we're doing this, Mike. We're, I started out in my life as a public servant in the state legislature. Mm -hmm. So before I was fortunate enough to be elected mayor of Albuquerque, I spent two terms in the state house. During that time, as a policymaker, yeah. we really gave a lot of thought to how can we help people thrive? And that's what, you know, that's whether you agree with someone who's in politics or not, um, yeah. one thing we can all agree on is they're all there to try to make a difference. Sure. So there's all these conversations about what, is, what does it look like to thrive? You know, certainly we want, we want our children to have a, a quality education. Mm -hmm. We want them to be well-rounded. We want them to, 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 you know, be fortunate enough to have an environment that they live in that helps them thrive. That's not always the case, uh, unfortunately. Yeah. But we also wanted, you know, through, through this plan for prosperity as a mayor, and, and what I saw in, this, in the state legislature, I guess, was Everybody had an idea. So there's an idea kind of siloed over here and an idea siloed over here. And people are trying to make policy based on what they think they see. It's, it's, like, the, it's like the story of the, the, the blind man and an elephant. What is an elephant like? It's like a long, thin <laughs> trunk. It's like, it's like a leathery skin. It's like sure. a long tail. Well, I wanted to try to expand that vision in Albuquerque and get a more holistic view of what prosperity looks like. So to do that, we are hosting, wow, in the last month we've hosted over 50 conversations with over almost 2,000 people mm. about what does prosperity look like to you? You know, my granddad um, was a rancher and a farmer in Nebraska, wore bib overalls every day of his life. Hmm. And, you know, came up, started raising the family right in the middle of the Depression. And, yeah. you know, my dad was born on the kitchen table of a farmhouse, of a ranch house in a dust storm in 1935. Hmm. And by today's standards, we would look at that and think, well, they didn't have much. Yeah. But my grandfather was one of the most prosperous people I ever met. So it, it isn't just about money or a, or a fancy watch or a fancy car, but it's also about economics. It is about being able to make a nice living, support your family, yeah. send your kids to the school of their choice, um, get them to college and be able to afford that if you, if you, if you can. Um, so, we, so we just said, instead of just one man telling you what prosperity looks like, why don't you as a community tell me what prosperity looks like for you? So if you're a young Hispanic male that goes to Rio Grande High School, um, what does prosperity look like for you? What does your future look like to you? Yeah. If you're a young lady that goes to Sandia High School, what does your future look like? If you're, if you're an old guy like me, 52 <laughs> years old, um, you know, what does prosperity look like for, yeah. for, for you? And maybe and what do you want it to look like for your children? The idea is to, to maybe mine some ideas from our community so that we can then craft policy as a city administration and share that with our friends in the state legislature as to what people really want so that we're not spending time, energy, and valuable resources chasing something that, quite frankly, people don't even see as prosperity. And I don't know where it's going to end up. I don't know yeah. exactly what the final outcome will be. We've got the University of New Mexico that's going to take the data and put it into a format and give it back to us in the community in a form that we can understand that's, that's uh, readable. I think that gives us a little bit more agility uh, rather than doing it just with taxpayer dollars. You know, one of the things that I, I love about what we do here in Albuquerque is that we, your administration listens. We have uh, these meetings, you mentioned had over 2,000 people give ideas and thoughts about what's going on and yeah. how to make that happen. I can't imagine the diversity of the answers that you had on what is prosperity. I can't wait to see. I've been to several, but I can't be to all of them. No, that's right. But there's some really interesting discussions. I'll bet. And then, and then also, as part of this, we were asking people to tell us what the hurdles and barriers are. You know, what, what, what's getting in your way? Yeah. Is it economics? Is it money? Is it the system itself? Is it, what is it? And then which hurdles can you get over on your own? Mm -hmm. And what hurdles do you need us to help you knock down? And, and I'm just really excited uh, to, to see what this looks like. I it's also, it's also interesting to get people at a table yeah. that traditionally aren't at the table together. So maybe, uh, and we all have a tendency to do this. We all have a tendency to 
go out to dinner with people that, that, that are like us, that believe like we believe in everything, yeah. and, or whether it's from our faith standpoint or, sure. or otherwise. And as a mayor, one of the great blessings is you get a chance to sit down with such a diverse group of people. Yeah. And, and hear what their ideas are, and that's that's when the magic happens. It does. Uh, and it doesn't, rarely does it turn into an argument. Um, but mostly you walk away from those discussions thinking, you know, I never thought of it that way. Exactly. Because my experiences in life were what they were, and somebody else's are different. That, that's a great perspective. I love the way that is. Now, what prompted this plan for prosperity to be created? What what was the catalyst? I Just understand that, it's been that, about a year, right? Yeah, well, actually we started about two years about ago. About two years And ago. it was that idea that, you know, what can we do? What yeah. can we do this different? And and whether it's the, whether it's the, the entrepreneurship movement that we're right. really starting in Albuquerque, um, which I think a lot of people for the first time, the light bulb's going on saying, you know, I can do a little bit better if I, if I uh, go from, as I, as I said earlier, you know, being a baker to having a bakery. Right. I've always wanted to do that. I want to chase my dream. That's my dream of prosperity. Whether I make a million dollars or not, if I could be my own boss, that's prosperity to me. Uh, for others, it is, you know, prosperity for me would be to, to go and get that college degree or go back and get my high school diploma because, you know, life got in the way in high school and for sure. whatever reason I didn't get my high school degree. Or go out and get your master's degree or get your Ph.D. or, or try something new. And it's scary. It's scary to do yeah. that. You know, we all, we all, nobody likes the status quo, but they're not too crazy about change either. Right. You know that right. I'm saying? Yeah, of course. Well, how can we get people the information, tools, techniques, and then resources as a community to do that and and I think government has a special role in that you know government is about picking up your trash in the morning first thing I gotta do today is I gotta make sure your trash gets picked up <laughs> then I gotta make sure the pothole in front of your house is filled and then I gotta make sure that the police and fire are there if you need help in a public safety situation but as the mayor if you can if you can get those things in place mm -hmm. and then you can start talking about ways you can help folks but then you also have to understand that government just can't do it all we can't be everything for everybody the faith community plays a huge part in this in in, in whether it's our homelessness initiative right. um, or whether it's the 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 digit camps for the kids or whether it's just going out and doing good things in the community i rely on the faith community to work alongside the business community, to work along, alongside the educational institutions, sure. to really make sure that those gaps are filled for people that need them. And so we're going to try to find out through this process where those gaps are. And we found this with the Homelessness Initiative. Yeah. We found gaps. We had a lot of well-intentioned people, including folks from the faith community. Mm -hmm. But when we started looking at it, we had two or three people doing the same thing. We had nobody doing something else that needed to be done. So we sat down with folks and said, love your passion, love your, love your desire to help. Um, maybe you could change a little bit about what you do to fill this gap over here, and then we can undo some of the, you know, some of the redundancies over here. And we now have 400 plus people wow. uh, living in housing in Albuquerque, and we have, uh, we think by the end of 2015, we will end veterans homelessness in the city of Albuquerque. Man, what a, what a great thing to accomplish. So if you're a homeless veteran, and uh, you fought for your country, and you helped keep us all safe, and you come home to tough times, mm -hmm. and we run into a lot of female veterans that, 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 that are in, the, in that boat. Yeah. Um, if we can get you stabilized in housing, well, as simple as that may look to you and I, Mike, that's prosperity for you today. It is. That's exactly now right. Now we can stabilize you. Now we can get you back in school. Now we can get your skill sets ramped up. Now we can you know, help, help you know, if you've got kids, uh, children, we can help make sure that their lives are stabilized so that they can go to school with something to eat and feel like, they're, like they can learn while they're in the classroom instead of struggling for survival. Wow. So this is why this prosperity thing is interesting because it kind of forces us to get out of our box. Sure. Well, that's fantastic. I, now, I understand that uh, we had talked about uh, starting a meeting group of civic leaders. We're talking about the conversation from the leadership uh, mm -hmm. that you have out there. And what does that look like for our city in particular? Now, we we're talking about individual people, but uh, I, I want to make sure that we don't confuse the city plan for maybe making uh, downtown a little bit nicer and doing things like that. That's different than this pro prosperity initiative. Correct. Uh, but it kind of all ties together. It does. Um, you know, as I travel the country, most of the cities that are thriving um, have a downtown that is in some form or fashion of revitalization. Right. Um, there's very few downtowns that are just 
perfect today. There's a couple, and there's some great examples. For the most part, every mayor I know talks about, let's get that urban core going again. Right. We have these millennials that are, that are coming up, these young folks, that they want to live downtown. We also have people that are retiring, that mm. find themselves as empty nesters. They want to live in urban areas. They want to get up in the morning and walk and get a cup of coffee. They want, to, they want the grocery store nearby. They don't want to have to live a car-based existence, so to speak. Yeah. And in the West, in the American West, we're very spread out. We're a large geographical city as well, right. well as, a, I think we're the 32nd largest city in the country now. Oh. So we're trying to get that urban core going. We're trying to bring the, te you know, the arts community together with the science community, the university folks with Sandia, with poets and painters and all of this great mix of people that we have here. And we're trying to revitalize downtown. And, and I can tell you it's going even faster than I thought it would. We, oh. you know, we re re um, we refinanced the debt in the convention center. We had some high interest rate debt. I don't know why it was such high interest rates, but right. we refinanced it at lower interest rates. So without asking the taxpayers for a single dime of tax, extra tax money, we went out and did a $25 million renovation. Wow. And it looks just beautiful. If you haven't been down to the new convention, or to the revitalized convention center right. in Civic Plaza, check it out. It looks like us and it feels like us. It's really Great. neat. And then we started with this digital backbone. Let's get, let's get people connected digitally downtown. Yeah. We've done some workforce housing. We've done some housing for folks that, that, that need some help subsidizing their rents to be able to, to, to live in a place where they can be connected to the, to the entrepreneurial community. Um, and then we're looking at the bus rapid transit line from yep. all the way from maybe 98th Street on the west side all the way to Tramway on the east side. So give people a better a better connection so that they can live in one part of the city, work in the other part of the city without having to spend all the time and effort um, you know, in the car every day. Or for some folks, you know, the eight or nine thousand dollars a year that it costs us to own a vehicle yeah. is just more than they can afford. Sure. Or maybe they're a working family where one car and two parents work. Um, uh, we can get them to and from, whether it's Presbyterian, hospital, like a big complex or Loveless or some of the hospital features around the, the North Campus sure. or, or the campus of UNM, or uh, whether it's uptown, whether they work in retail or whether it's the west side. Um, we're just trying to tie everything in and, and try to bolster our downtown a little bit because we think that's a big part of the equation. And, and so much of this prosperity is interlinked with all these things you're talking about. It's not just, uh, I, know, I know I do, I tend to think in terms of what applies to me, but it's more than that. It's an understanding of everything that's going on together for that prosperity. Well, and it all ties into us helping each other. Absolutely. If you've Absolutely. got something that, you know, it, it, it just goes back to, uh, you know, even biblical times, right? You know, yeah. if you had, if you had, uh, if you have something that I need and I have something that you need, that's, you know, that was the original barter system. That's right. Well, that's exactly. built on this idea that uh, we each have something to share with each other and both of our lives can be better if we just pitch in and, and help each other. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, why is it important to explore what prosperity means to Albuquerque before implementing any new policies? Do you consider that first? Well, it's just it's what I talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. It's a little, um, you know, I saw this in state legislature, and I see it now as mayor. It's uh, it's a little bit prideful, I think, to think that as an elected official, you're the only person that has a good idea. Yeah. So let's take those ideas from the community. That's who I work for. I, you know, I meet little kids all the time. Yeah. It's, a, it's a lot of fun. And I always ask them, I say, who do I work for? <laughs> and they say, you work for the president. Or you say, they, <laughs> you work for what? But they never say themselves. And I always say, I work for you. Uh, you know, you, you're, you're, you're 12 years away from being able to vote, but I work for you. <laughs> I work great. for you. And I work for your mom and your dad and your aunts and uncles and grandpas and grandmas. And, and, and we want them, you know, we want our community to understand that we're listening. And it's not just one guy with what he thinks is his ideas. We're gonna build them around the community. Perfect example, when I was in the state legislature in 2007, I met with a group of high school kids in Albuquerque. And I said, what is it that's keeping you from getting where you wanna get? And a lot of these kids weren't gonna go on to college. They wanted to learn a skill. And they weren't, they weren't you know, we can't expect the school system to teach 900 apprenticeable trades. So we started a program called Running Start for Careers. Oh, okay. We changed the state law to allow for industry professionals to teach elective classes in high school for credit for graduation. And now we have eight industry sectors that are teaching. We have almost 500 kids taking these classes. These kids were in a group of, the, you know, a cohort of students that maybe would graduate around 60% of them might graduate. We now have a 99% on-time graduation rate for these students because we listened. We asked them what they needed. We, we changed the state law. We went to industry, the private sector, and said, please help us. Industries teaching these classes, whether it's construction, nursing, the film, you know, lab technologies, uh, hospitality, financial services through the credit sure. union, and all of a sudden now, 
Um, we have a very successful program, all because we took the time to sit down and listen. Well, Mayor, thank you so very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be oh, with thanks. us today. It's always a pleasure to have you on the air and do that. And thank you for what you and your team are doing for this city. It's well, just so greatly thanks. appreciated. For our viewers today, thank you for joining me on Joy in Our Town. My name is Mike Cosgrove. You have a blessed day. This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network and made possible by your telephone dollars. Your continual support can keep Joy in Our Town brought to your home every day. So write Join Our Town, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.